Many Star Trek episodes mention and use photon torpedoes and quantum torpedoes were heavily referenced in Deep Space Nine and TNG. It seems logical to assume that if phasers are possible, then torpedoes are too. Think about it. We already have submarine torpedoes and missiles, so what's so hard about firing TNT into space? Well, it's not as easy as it seems. A lot of research has been done in order to make these, however, no one has ever succeeded in making them. Here's Elon Musk, who's capable of doing something out of the ordinary. Now, he thinks it might be possible to build a photon torpedo. Well, stay tuned to the end of the video and get to know more about it. Hello everyone, and welcome to Elon Musk Evolution. If you're a Musk fan and don't want to miss anything about this incredible person, then smack the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever a new video is uploaded. In today's video, we are going to tell you about Musk's theory on the existence of torpedoes. Certainly there is a lot to take into account here, and the technology doesn't seem to be as clear-cut as simple lasers. As a matter of fact, in Memory Alpha and in the Star Trek Technical Manual, they refer to photon torpedoes as antimatter warheads. Surely, just by that claim alone, photon torpedoes will be more difficult to attain. Assuming that such an assertion is correct, let us see how Musk explained that. If photon torpedoes are technically possible, or if realistic science ultimately blows them out of the water. According to Musk, the goal of technology is to take yesterday's fantasy and turn it into today's reality. In fact, it isn't unusual to see things like this homemade laser shotgun popping up in backyards like little bits of science fiction. On the other hand, there are university laboratories in which students theorize how to build a staple of science fiction, photon torpedoes. It is no secret that photon torpedoes have been an integral part of Star Trek stories ever since they first appeared. But who would have thought that it might actually be possible to build a photon torpedo? Elon Musk conducted a study that has provided insight into the possibility of building a photon torpedo as well as the materials that are likely to be required for it to work. Specifically, Musk determined that photon torpedoes probably work through a reaction called annihilation in its core. This reaction occurs when antimatter and matter collide with one another to eventually produce a chain reaction that results in an explosion. Because of the scarcity of antimatter and the high cost of its production, Musk hypothesized that an electromagnetic cascade would have to be the mechanism used to liberate the energy. This is a situation when high-energy particles interacting with a metal such as iron, uranium, or lead can mix with one another in order to produce matter and antimatter pairs, electrons and positrons, which are converted into photons, torpedoes, upon collision. In other words, he said that photon torpedoes are metal casings that suspend positrons, a form of antimatter that reacts violently with electrons in an internal magnetic field, which collapses on impact and is ejected into the normal matter, bringing it into contact with its host. It can be concluded that when both types of particles collide with each other, an explosion of incredible violence is generated. Considering that the average nuclear warhead contains one milligram of antimatter, a photon torpedo would have released energy of 180 million kilojoules, equivalent to 43 metric tons of TNT. If we were to construct a torpedo that would have a yield like this, and keep in mind that we are only dealing with only one milligram of antimatter, the result would look something like the explosion of 50 tons of TNT in 1963. According to Musk, a photon torpedo, when used as an explosive device in space, would have the advantage that you won't have combustible oxygen. And as a result of this, the combustion of explosive fuel sources, including TNT, requires oxygen as a reactant, and such a reaction cannot occur in the absence of oxygen, which is why fire cannot occur in a vacuum, let alone in outer space. Immediately after this, he also raised a problem relating to the use of explosives in space without oxygen to ignite the agent. How can this be done without causing too many deaths in the process? And explain that, unlike other reactions, matter-antimatter reactions do not require oxygen. In fact, antimatter annihilation occurs spontaneously at the quantum level, so antimatter weapons are effective in any atmosphere. Fundamentally, the absence of oxygen in space does not make any difference to the explosive outcome of antimatter annihilation. He stated, the use of photon torpedoes in space 
would be identical to that of photon torpedoes in an atmosphere. Star Trek proves once again that they are unwavering in their devotion to science. However, as Musk claimed, we can indeed produce antimatter at the present time, and it is a science concept that is based on real-life experiments. The fact remains that antimatter can be produced in large particle colliders, such as those found at CERN and Fermilab, even though only a few nanograms have ever been produced and maintained for only a few milliseconds. It seems that the prospects of creating photon torpedoes appear to be getting brighter since antimatter can be created. Even though he is so indulged in it, he explained that it is very possible that photon torpedoes will be a science fact in the near future, though there are severe limitations, which mean that photon torpedoes are less likely to become a reality in the near future than phasers. Despite its amazing benefits, antimatter has a very steep production cost. It can cost up to $25 billion per gram. Due to the fact that antimatter is one of the rarest resources in the universe, it would also be impractical to harvest antimatter. He said, I think it is not a good idea for mankind to use photon torpedoes in the future because mass production is out of the question, since there may not be enough antimatter to make more than a few torpedoes each carrying only a few micrograms or even nanograms of antimatter. There is a possibility that we may have to deal with much lower yields of antimatter than we would like. He further explained that torpedoes in space are also difficult, since Newton's first law of motion states that an object in uniform motion or at rest will remain in its current state until it is acted upon. Star Trek's photon torpedoes are known for their accuracy and maneuverability. They track down and destroy their targets with deadly precision. However, missiles and jets get their aerodynamic ability from air resistance. That's why Musk explained that an object can't make sharp turns, loops, or change direction without a force pushing against the direction of the object's motion and another force pushing in the opposite direction. This is why planes have wing flaps, so they can take advantage of air resistance and adjust airflow. As mentioned before, space is a vacuum, so air resistance doesn't exist. So, according to Musk, firing a torpedo in space will simply make the torpedo travel in a straight line, with or without thrusters, forever and ever until it hits something. And if the torpedo were to thrust left while forward motion, it wouldn't change its direction completely to the left, it'd travel diagonally. So when you apply a force in a new direction, it doesn't cancel out the previous vector, unless you act against the torpedo's forward motion. In fact, Musk explained the reason behind this. He said the reason for this is because vectors are additive. Force vectors applied in both forward and left directions result in a net vector in the diagonal left-forward direction. So assuming that the Enterprise and the Romulan bird of prey do not move, Musk indicated that a torpedo shot at the ship's face will destroy it. Musk ended his argument by saying that this does not mean we can't use photon torpedoes in the future. It simply means that space combat would no longer be as exciting as Star Trek DS9. So I guess we know that Musk will come up with a way to make this in the future, so it would not be a surprise that he will be able to find a way to do this in Star Trek style. Anyways, folks, that's it for today's video. If you're interested in watching more videos on Elon Musk, then what are you waiting for? Simply click the subscribe button and ring the bell icon because new videos are on the way, and we'll see you in the next one.